So two things before we dive into this video. First things first, today is actually my birthday. So if you want to weigh in on the comments with a happy birthday, or you want to come hang out with me over on Twitch, I'm actually going to be live streaming most of the day today. Uh, we can have a discussion about this video specifically, or just a little bit of a happy birthday wish and more. So it's going to be a fun time. Hopefully you will stop by. Now, the second thing is that I haven't seen this video yet, but I have a couple of thoughts that I'd like to share before we dive into Preach's reaction. Now, um, in this video, I will include a link to the description and this video will actually end up being kind of chopped up a little bit because Preach's video is 24 minutes long. So that's a long reaction style video because I turn these into bigger discussion uh, topics themselves. So note that if you want to see his full video without my commentary, that will be in the links. Otherwise, this will be kind of chopped up to his key points and my thoughts on it. Now, I've already pre-liked the video. Again, it'll be in the description, but we're going to have some fun here. Now, I do tend to look at MMOs, especially with MMO tribalism, tribalism being kind of this competition between uh, each MMO. Now, there are crossovers. And so within the genre itself, because we could look at the whole gaming you know, landscape and say there's tribalism everywhere. But I think within MMOs, due to the amount of time that some of them required, uh, it's kind of evolved over the course of the last couple of years or at least decade. So we could talk about that, probably explore that in this video. But due to that amount of time and also that they were heavily baked uh, on the subscription model, I think it inherently built in this aspect that you're supporting one and hurting the other. Now, overall, I think most gamers tend to like to kind of jump around between a handful of MMOs. But generally speaking, there is this this searching that gamers have, MMO players especially have, for both the next big MMO, but an MMO that they can call their home MMO, the thing that they, they want to live and breathe and experience. And I think that's something very unique personally to the genre, but we could always discuss other genres that maybe kind of like bump up against that. But anyway, that's just my thought. I think MMO tribalism is very natural to the genre itself. And I think ultimately we hope to see that evolve uh, with obviously the kind of new technology and new business models. But well, anyway, I don't want to get too much into kind of my thoughts. Maybe Preach will touch in on that. And if you guys want more of that and this video doesn't cover it, just let me know and we can kind of have a bigger, deeper dive into the state of MMOs. Anyway, if you guys feel like this video earns it, um, feel free to hit that like button. It really helps it out in the algorithm. You can also subscribe if you haven't already. And hello, if you're brand new, uh, my name's Brian and I like talking about video games, especially MMORPGs. Um, and that's kind of what we do here. So you guys sent me this video. We're going to keep uh, reacting to the videos that you guys send over. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. So first things first, let's go ahead and full screen this and let's dive right in. I've got to say, man, I didn't even know FF was like this. Like every time someone showed it me, it was just like weeby, stupid nonsense stuff all the time. Yeah, man, I mean, that stuff is in there, but it's like it's to build a stronger, tighter community, you know? All right, so we're a couple of seconds in. We're 14 seconds in. I never really heard the term weeb until I heard Asmund say it and kind of put that as a label on Final Fantasy 14 specifically. I never understood it. And then when I went to look it up, it just feels like it's a label to dismiss it. I, I guess somebody who has played JRPGs for a long time, a wide range of RPGs, not just Japanese RPGs. I, I like I've never kind of felt like there was anything like weeby like based off of its definition now i've met people who are obsessed with uh, japanese culture and i guess maybe they kind of fit the definition of it but ultimately it just seems like okay this is something that's different and how can i apply a label to it and i think that maybe that is a part of tribalism or a part of human you know, human culture uh to a degree right finding a way to discount or dismiss it and they just use that label because it is rooted in, in Japan, right? It's, oh, it's it's obviously it's from Japan or it's Korean. It's it's this weeby kind of mindset. And so that in and of itself, I think was one of the reasons why many people stayed away from Final Fantasy 14. And then going into that aspect, once really Asmund uh, made that jump into it, we kind of saw that wall, that barrier break down and still people might not enjoy the game. Uh, that's, you know, that's never been the issue. Everybody's gonna have different tastes in different games. But ultimately, having them finally try it and go, oh, I really actually enjoy this. The the elements that people showed me, you know, you make assumptions and thus you dismiss it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't judge anybody for, I guess, having that mindset. I just I can't relate to that that viewpoint whatsoever. Dude, I totally get that, right? I have never known players to be this friendly. Every time I do a dungeon or something, people are being nice. I, it's weird. Like, it's almost bizarre, right? 
That's what it's all about in FF, right? We build like community etiquette, doesn't even need to be talked around. Like in dungeons, we see a sprout, we let them watch the whole video before they pull the last boss. It's just perfect. No way. I mean, I skip them anyway, right? Because I want to pop some deeps, bro. Uh-oh. You don't have to do that. Uh-oh. You can enjoy the story. Yeah, I, I, I've got to say, I like that story. I mean, you can, like, skip certain bits of it, you know what I mean? But the main, like, overall, it's like a decent story. I like it. What do you mean you don't have to listen to it all? <laughs> you know, like oh, the no. side bits, right? Like, so, yesterday, I'm playing the MSQ. And this, like, little Pikachu Lalafell thing came up to me and started talking about science and stuff. I mean, that's a skip, right? That is a skipper's. <laughs> Her name is Kryle. <laughs> you, you know what? Maybe maybe this isn't for you, you know? Maybe you should go back to the single-player Final Fantasy or something. Weren't you saying you were going to play FF7? Mm, I was, right? But it's all right. I like the bit where you can change the names, though, right? I mean, what kind of name is Eris? <laughs> It's everything! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, I want to talk about a little bit about what we just saw right there. Obviously, they're, uh, they're having fun talking about skipping cutscenes. And uh, it's so interesting because this it, this felt so true to life uh, to a degree. Like, where it's almost a meme in and of itself within the 14 community. Very friendly until it's not. Until it... it, it like, there's a moment where... It is almost the sense of like etiquette, right? Like that you come into the game and I think that's something that maybe I could do better as a part of my guides. Like, listen, here are some of the things that you would like to do. Like if you're going to go to this party, like, okay, what's the dress like? What, like, what are the manners like? You want to understand kind of the culture. Like maybe it, like if you go to a specific house, like take off your shoes before you walk around, like everybody has their kind of thing. And then essentially within Final Fantasy 14, the story is something so like so appreciated and the community especially from a content creator's perspective like really does not enjoy when people like skip the story now i've been playing the story i'm playing for the story but i definitely know that that is something that happens multiple times like i get the best case of point of this is that my my, my friend chris that we share work to game with uh he was a story skipper he said that the game built that for him like it's and then other games trained him for that so the idea was that you get to the end game and the story yeah, like if you want to participate in it and so he actually got invited to play the story in shadowbringers played shadowbringers and endwalker and now has been playing and played all the way through arr and is stepping into heaven's word so he's now appreciating it in this kind of a different kind of way but that's one of the things that i've kind of said that is the beauty of final fantasy 14 especially with new game plus is that let's say you are and have always been a story skipper. That, that is who you are. It's built into your DNA. Well, guess what? 14 has the tools so that like you can go and experience the content and then decide if you want to then level it up and play through the story. And I think that's actually a really good thing. And I think that as a community overall, we should have that level of flexibility as opposed to like saying you can't unless you enjoy the game the way that I enjoy the game, more or less that, hey, when you experience the game that you are hoping to experience guess what there's like this extra stuff that you can experience as well and the game has the tools to give that experience to you rather than punishing it for you but i think as the community kind of grows and matures and as those tools become i guess wider accepted that i think it'll be interesting to see what that kind of meme looks like maybe in the next three to five years but obviously we'll have to wait and see mmo tribalism what the fuck is going on with this? <laughs> Holy crap. All right. So if you don't know, two things happened in the past two weeks that have really exposed the, uh, the ugly underbelly of MMO gamers. And it's not just MMO gamers. It's all gamers in general. In fact, I can think back to like 10 years ago when my man John Bain, Total Biscuit, made a video exactly like this talking about the crazy, crazy mindset of a lot of gamers when they take snippets and bits of information and then they run wild with it and go crazy. So, first things first, a couple of weeks ago, a dance club, nightclub, ERP sort of club <laughs> put up a real-life billboard in the streets of America to advertise their upcoming summer party. Uh, now, I'm not going to talk about the billboard itself, there's lots of information about that, but it was <laughs> so stupid and really funny, but also extremely riled up the player base and a lot of crazy things went out there despite there being no repercussions that we know of whatsoever for these guys doing this 
So I want to talk, jump in on this a little bit. So you're talking about the billboard, talking about how that kind of blow up, uh, blew up. I have, and this is just my personal theory. You do not need to subscribe to it, but I believe content uh, to be really king, to be the, the the aspect that also kind of binds us together. And when there's long gaps, somebody kind of even made, made it like made a note of it one time, and they're like, "Well, why is all of a sudden there's this drama?" And I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, "Well, we haven't had content in a while." And not that people are trying to make drama, it just ends up floating to the surface. Uh, it becomes much easier. A band becomes more of the center of focus because if, let's say, the billboard thing happened and everybody's playing the new raids, the, the new, like, it just kind of dips out, it goes away. I've also seen because the same day, uh, the music video was released. Uh, it was incredible. They had like all these different creators all singing uh, the song and it was beautifully edited. And the billboard in and of itself overshadowed that. And for like, I would say good reason to the sense that people all watched the music video and was like, that was neat. And then you had the billboard thing going on and becoming kind of the headline story. It That's an unfortunate timing of events where if the billboard things didn't happen, I think there would probably have been more discussion about kind of community projects, et cetera. And hopefully that, that doesn't discourage uh, people from getting together and doing those kind of collabs uh, in the future. But all that being said is that the billboard stuff, I think was also in lieu of news and content to talk about. So all of a sudden it became this thing. Uh, and so that's just essentially my personal theory. You don't need to subscribe to it, but that's where I think within other games, people are like, oh, wait a minute, like Final Fantasy doesn't have that. Well, Final Fantasy had a really tight patch schedule, had a really tight content schedule and loop. So you're always either playing the new content or being excited for about what's to come next. And now with a little bit of a longer dev cycle, which I think is good and better for health reasons of the dev. So I fully support that. That gives more opportunity to kind of find these, these silly little moments within the community itself. Um, at the end of the day, like I was tickled by the entire billboard thing. I thought that was just the funniest thing. And, uh, and it is what it is, but it was just like, that was just to me, I was like, this is so funny. Like, this is really interesting, uh, to see, but people, you know, obviously like can take things a little bit too far, not the people making the content, but, uh, essentially kind of that, um, the kind of that dog pile mentality, but that's not unique to 14. That's not even unique to gaming. It's maybe kind of a little bit of how social media impacts us all because the reaction of the Final Fantasy community was extreme. Now, let's talk about that real quickly before we get on to the second thing. So I wanna, I'm gonna jump in again on this because essentially what I, I, I say is that Final Fantasy XIV has a very tight moderation policy within the game itself. So when you start to see this kind of toxicity and drama, it actually, I think, is more plaguing the online space. And this is where I would personally love to see more tools especially on the youtube side of things on reddit and on twitch those tools exist on youtube it becomes very difficult to tell if someone's just memeing if they mean what they say what have they said before and what i mean by that is that over on twitch and on reddit like you can kind of click through we saw this actually happen with asmin where somebody was basically trying to be like a final fantasy 14 andy and then uh when you actually drill back into it they're actually just pretending because they're just wow and they're just trying to make the final fantasy 14 community look bad online uh, not that we don't have uh, and within any community like you'll have people who take it too far uh, you know they you know it, and I've often made the argument is like they love the game so much they wish it would die. They love it to the point where it's kind of you have that maybe like Elvira, you know, like from um, <laughs> like Pinky in the Brain, where like they squeeze it until it's untenable. And we have a problem with that, I think, in feedback and in communication, especially with online forums. And I'd love to see them bring in a, you know, more of that feedback mechanism into the game itself so that anybody can kind of share their voice. But I have seen that within the policy shift that they made a couple of years ago, some people thought, thought that they were taking away uh, way too far, but the in-game chat is very peaceful. It's very welcoming. Uh, and that's a really good thing. When you step into the things on the social media side of it, that's where all of a sudden you start to see the kind of the fangs and the frustrations uh, that people have. And it's predictable. You can set a clock to it. You can kind of say that when, it's, when the content's hot, the story's there, people are excited about that. But as that kind of, you know, drips off, it goes long, then then you end up starting to see a little bit more people who are frustrated because they want to play the game. Uh, they want to be excited, but maybe they've done everything in the game or they've done everything that they want to do in the game. Um, it, it really is interesting. Like it's it, it involves, I think, a wider range of like 
if I, if like, if you're going to prepare a guide for somebody like, listen, at some point you're going to feel like you've done everything in the game. It's perfectly fine to take a break. Yoshi P encourages that. And you're not going to be punished for taking a break outside of housing. Housing is a, a whole other bag of chips that, you know, I don't want to sit here and unpack on in, in this video, being that we're only like four minutes into preaches. Which is Dragonfly Alpha, which we'll get there in a minute. So, no, it is. It's a very friendly mode. What I would say is I have been recently playing through all the FFs. I want the history. I want to see where the development came from, what inspiration came from, how they redeveloped their systems. The same stuff I want to know about any game with this kind of longevity is where did it originate from? How did we get from A to B? How did we get there? So in doing that, I have found that very, very toxic underbelly. And it's bizarre because you just don't expect it to exist. And for so, in some cases, particularly Final Fantasy VII, uh, we found people who were extremely protective. Let's use that word. And I would say to those guys who are like, whoa, is FF kind of a scam level of not toxic? No, it's not. In nearly all cases and in everything we're going to talk about today, the overwhelming majority of people are totally nice, totally wonderful people. And that's true of every single game. It's that minority. And especially the minority that's very invested that is a little scary if i'm being honest with you like actually like scare not scare scaring me but more like obnoxious to be around they're really crazy to be with and they're awful awful people in general in terms of their mentality i'm not saying they're real life awful people but their mentality about certain things is madding like it well and that's something when it comes down to like are they are you a real life awful person or just an online awful person uh, I don't think we should separate those two kind of m mentalities, right? Like you should, I think, consort, uh, consort yourself if you're, you know, like, it, unless you're like just trying to be a troll and meme, like, it, like there's, I think there's something, you know, that the internet can open up and, and there could be some kind of fun to be had there. Um, but for me personally, especially as somebody who puts their face on camera, I believe that I should, you know, conduct myself online as I would conduct myself in the real world and so like there's times where i've been really mean and like i guess mean maybe is a little too hard of a term but really like you know punching right back uh to somebody who's been rude in the comments i don't I, I don't hide it like those things exist because like i would do the same thing in the real world but obviously like within social media and in this case like you only obviously see like kind of a small slice of my day to day so it's like yeah there's perfectly fine but i believe that how i act on online and in the game should also be a reflection of who I am in the real world. And I believe that I, I do that. I think essentially if I didn't, those things would show, those things would be very, very true. But for somebody to be incredibly like mean and hateful and, and really what I think that he's getting at here is the concept of gatekeeping. Uh, we have that within any, any game. There's always going to be somebody who feels like they're going to have to gatekeep you because they like either know more or they love the game more. Um, it's this weird, there's a weird competitiveness, I think in that concept, but we see that happen all the time, especially because there, and there's a weird line. As soon as you are actually like either known within a community or that your videos get like ads that can generate money for you, then they'll use that as a, as a way to kind of check you. Now, one of the things I look forward to seeing, cause I think it's going to happen at some point is that being that I, love and a uh, new world and i'm just absolutely enjoying that game uh i made a channel that's focused in on covering new world just like i have a channel focusing on just covering final fantasy and blue protocol like at some point i know that that critique's going to come uh when new world is able to kind of rally and, and deliver more content for players to enjoy that there'll be somebody like oh the only reason you're doing that you you clearly knew like t you know however many years ago that while the game was struggling that it would rebound it's like well, no, like we didn't know that was going to happen with Final Fantasy 14. We didn't know that was going to happen with New World. We, but we, there's, I think there's things that you can kind of measure. And so what I'm getting at with that point is I honestly think, and there'll be somebody who will accuse me of that because they'll try and discount my opinion if it doesn't affirm their opinion. Uh, and that's essentially kind of within gaming. It's this weird uh, weird aspect. I think people use reviews, not for the reviews to buy the game. They'll go to a live stream if they're trying to decide to buy a game or something like that, but they'll use a review that if they purchase the game to try and affirm and justify their purchase of that game within Final Fantasy 14 or within the Final Fantasy world that it's like, uh, you know, th there's all kinds of levels and people want to justify their, their passion. And if somebody's coming in it, in this world, in this, in this, you know, game of social media attention, 
you're always kind of like there's a skepticism, a cynicism that has boiled up within anybody who comes to say, uh, hey, this is something that I do and this is something I'm passionate about. And it immediately it's easier to, to just discount somebody rather than hear, hear them out because like if you go look at your feed, there's a thousand videos for competing for your time and attention. It's a really complex uh, issue and one that, you know, again, I, I maybe we'll explore a little bit more in this video. And it was, it was again, this salty tribalism that kicked off is like being a traitor to a video game is fucking stupid. Absolutely fucking stupid. That's like being a traitor to Coca-Cola. What are you doing? Honestly, you absolute maniacs. Like, well, I mean, yes and, and <laughs> yes and yes, but let's unpack that. Let's talk about what it means to be something. And this is something where maybe this is more unique to content creators because that we see this all the time. Like, oh, I know you because you made this video and that's how I discovered you. And then, oh wait, now you're playing another game. This all ties back into the idea that stepping away from a game uh, is is hurting the game. There's probably other ideas to unpack there. Like, don't, don't hear me and be like, Brian says this is the one thing and he's clearly not thinking about X, Y, and Z. Um, because that's that's why I believe in the discussion of video games because I can't, you know, anticipate your specific situation and your relationship with the game but relationship is the key word here relationship is very important because video games are deeply personal for for people there's a as like over a tv show or a painting or or what have you right the like a painting it might be deeply personal for the person who painted it but a video game is that not only are you experiencing maybe some a story and some stuff that people created but you the player are making choices and your experience becomes deeply personal. And especially like if you ever talk with Chris about this, like world of Warcraft for him, like was also at a really crazy critical time in his young adult life. Something that when he's, you know, shared that with me on stream, like what was going on? Like it's, it's un it's unreal. And so video games like throughout my history for me, Final Fantasy was something that helped me uh, get over my fear of, of speaking and reading with my dyslexia. Like it helped me push through, even though I say things wrong and even though like I would read things wrong, it gave me the interest that I could kind of dive in and unpack that. And so I have a deep connection with that. I there are memories of of moments that surprised me and, and excited me um, that gave me a, a, like a sense that I, you know, uh, of friends that especially as a kind of a weird kid as a kid who you know I, like I had friends but it said as a kid who like didn't like have a lot of friends who wasn't very popular that you know when people started playing Final Fantasy 7 that all of a sudden it was like oh my gosh like we can sit down and talk about this because before it was always kind of like you know like I really can't share and so for me like f like I have a, a deep connection and love of video games but thankfully, I also have a balance of those games to note that like there's something very valuable here. And when there isn't, it's OK to kind of step away. And I see a lot of people who have that deep love, but they don't actually have anything else that they can kind of turn to. So seeing somebody like, you know, like, let's say, you know, like this video would know will never exist. It's like, you know, like I'm done with Final Fantasy. It's like, no, like that would be. That would be foolish. That would be something where that would be a very emotional in the moment video, but it wouldn't be something that would be true over the course of five or, or 10 years. And it's like, because at some point, like it's maybe you're done right now, but people might be hurt by that. People could be uh, impacted by that because they, they want you to, to, to play the game and support the game uh, that they are wanting. And I think they re like recognize that. I actually, it's always kind of interesting that it's like, like social media, and a job of a content creator isn't isn't to lie because preach kind of hits this right out of the park he's talking about like it's easier to tell the truth rather than trying to remember all the lies that you tell like for me i've always said that like if i wasn't who i was like if, if, if i was trying to play some kind of character like that would be it would be easy to see through those cracks pretty quickly because it would be impossible to maintain over the course of the amount of content that i've made on across this platform and any platform that i've got content on and, and so like, yeah, I completely understand and agree with that. But essentially though, like within the job of the content creator is that like, I would say that maybe, maybe 80% sub for the game and then maybe 20% sub for, the, for me in this regard, or in this case, preach. And that number could vary. It could, it could be 90, 10, it could be 75, 25, but over, overwhelmingly, I feel like it's the game and then the person who is making the content 
for the game that you want to watch. I'm guilty of this, right? Like there are people who suffer, you know, like me, they like my like real talk videos and that's awesome. That's, those are my, my biggest uh, <laughs> subscription lo losing videos, but check about on Sunday. If you want to see what I, what I mean, they're the ones that don't have a thumbnail and you see my night, my balding head. Um, but what it is, is that, that when you sub to me and let's say you sub for, you know, Final Fantasy or for, you know, Outriders or for New World or for Blue Protocol or for Fantasy Star Online 2. Like, I, I believe it's healthier for me to talk about multiple games. Um, but beyond that aspect, like, it does feel like, well, maybe I don't really want to watch that right now. And there's, and you shouldn't have to, like, you shouldn't have to feel like you have to support every piece of content that I make. And so I do see, and I do feel like within that aspect, within that, that, you know, um, that landscape is that you want to support the game that you want to support because that's a way that you recognize that it can get out to more people. Maybe more people come check out the game and then the game does well. And then we get more content, you know, like that's how I've always kind of seen it. It's like, you know, I've always encouraged people like, I don't know if this is going to be the game for you, but you should try it out. Like, and especially in 14's case with its free trial, like you can really have a great experience and not have to spend any money and see if this game is the game for you anyway like that's a long way to go about it um let me let uh, preach continue on <laughs> people are to companies and products and things like that despite what it's like is so weird it's so weird to read how entrenched people are with a company i understand for a lot of people it may have changed their lives at some point got them out of depression uh, it may have been something they coped with during serious illness. May have got them out of some dark time in their life. May have been the happiest moments of their life. I agree. WoW has some of the happiest moments of my gaming life, for sure, uh, of, as happened in World of Warcraft, uh, without question. But when that thing turns sour on you, which it did for me over BFA and Shadowlands, uh, then not eating that thing anymore is is fine. It's totally fine. I think to speak to me kind of on, on like what... Um gaming and also like in a way content creation has been is that like i don't i don't go out to bars i don't i don't i've never been a big party guy like i always like good conversation i always like a good discussion and that's essentially kind of what like content creation and final fantasy 14 and all that really means to me is the, the ability to sit down and just kind of talk with everybody about what's going on with the game what we hope for the game what we want for its future so it's important and there's a sense of belonging there's a sense of uh, you know, and I, I, I hesitate to use the word ownership because like we don't own the game, but we own, um, you know, kind of that, that connection to it. Right. Like that's something that I think is very important. And then it's good to see that when games are able to kind of fulfill that. But like, if you go look at, you know, like numbers and, and the processes that like right now, 14 is doing exactly what 14 was going to do. It's going to, you know, it's going to have its, you know, lull time. It's going to have its cool down time. And then once the kind of everything kicks off for the next expansion, it'll start its next hype time. And people will be excited. People will return. And so I think it's important to kind of, you know, in a way, but kind of be rooted and not necessarily have your like emotional or your, you know, just well-being tied to the success of a game company publisher or, or more, but it's fine to root for those. It's fine to, to be excited. And I think there's a fun aspect of it, but that fun gets kind of twisted when, it be, kind of comes your identity, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm a Final Fantasy player and this is what I believe about myself as opposed to something where it's like, yeah, I play Final Fantasy and I love it and I want it to do well, uh, but it's okay to not like, you know, have to sit here and be like, oh, you, maybe you didn't like that patch. And then, because I think when when that relationship goes sour, it goes sour real quick. Some of the, the people I've seen who become the most avent like haters and, and people who root for like a game to fail which in my mind is is ludicrous and you know like i can't i can't get behind that because there are real people behind you know the game itself but are the people who adamantly love the game the most or they, they at some point like i love this game it'll never do anything wrong this is so great and then essentially like you if you know you leave you, you jump ahead a couple years and all of a sudden they're like this game sucks. I hate it. Like, you know, uh, and people who play it suck. And that's essentially where like, you know, I don't know if maybe that's a personality trait. I don't know what's going on in their lives. And I always just try to feel like I try to have empathy for that individual. Um, but yeah. And dealing with this, all I would say to these guys and this, tr this tribalist mentality of bandwagoning onto something and then being like, okay, I'm in this box now. And we go full choo choo ahead, ignoring un inconvenient things like facts or, uh, actually checking sources, which was a big thing that happened over both Good. the billboard situation 
and with the Dragonflight Alpha situation with myself uh, was that nobody checked. The angriest people never checked anything. They read a news article which obviously designed to clickbait people. That's what news are. They probably just read the headlines. They probably just like read the, the whatever the clickbaity headline was and then made up, made their opinion. And this is kind of one of the problems with social media and the age of the attention being that attention can get you notoriety or like, I, I don't, I don't think it's the right kind. I always kind of look at it as like, if you think about sugar, like it just burns up real quick, you know, gets you, it gets you that hit of energy and then you crash. But uh, yeah, like this age of trying to always, you know, get that attention, get that one upmanship. Uh, and so they read it like a headline, they form an opinion, they go and share that opinion. And there really isn't any, you know, this is the thing I've, I've kind of seen. It's like, there really isn't any kind of repercussion for having a bad take. One of the things like I've often said is that actually having the bad take or just having a take whatsoever uh, is uh, is more advantageous in how these algorithms work rather than a sincere, coming in with a well thought out piece. Now, for the health and for the life and for the enjoyment, having a well thought out, well rounded approach is absolutely better for you as a content creator. But a lot of people are really just kind of looking for those, you know, quick fixes that like that, you know, in a way you could almost describe it as get, get rich quick scheme versus actually like, okay, well, we're going to sit down and we're going to, we're going to chew on this. We're going to really try to dissect it and understand it because I think that's what people actually crave. But in a way, like just like with any kind of diet, like the more sugar you have, the more that you, you want. And then at some point you just get sick and you're like, why do I feel like a bag, bag of crap? And it's like, you just been consuming sugar all this time. Now, like, let's get, let's get some protein and vegetables in you. Let's actually start to find people who are like, who are thoughtful and, and precise and they, they think through the problems and the questions and they look at a lot of sources to really try to unpack it. At least that's, that's my take on it. And that's just my view articles do especially from random websites right you can google my name and leaving wow and you'll find some really extreme articles about it and then on that note just to continue this thought process is that a lot of the reasons why you see that is people trying to get that algorithm to recommend not just maybe that article but future articles as well any kind of thing any kind of trend they like all of it is is just designed to try and grab that that's why you'll see like you know, release date, a lot of, like things that people are interested in. They want to go have that metadata tagged. They want to go and help that. And then they want to also point that to whatever else so that the algorithm tries to continue to raise it to the top, the cream of the crop, you know, kind of mindset. And if something's made you really angry and you're just reading a comment on Reddit or reading it on a forum or something like that, and then you're saying that is gospel. No, no, come on, man. Do better than that. Do better than that. If just some, somebody says this has cost us like $25,000, like in the case of the billboard. Oh, it must have cost them that because that's what it costs in California or whatever. And the guy. So this is something that's really interesting because I don't, I think a lot of people don't have a lot of time. You know, I think it's interesting. We have the ability to communicate faster than ever before and find the information faster than ever before, but we have less time to do so. And so I think essentially kind of the idea that, you know, to expect people to go and verify, like I would definitely want to encourage that, uh, dive deep, be skeptical, ask questions. That's actually what I was taught. Always ask questions. All right. Why did they say that? Who was paying for that? Uh, why do they wanted to create that in the first place? And then I think a lot of it also ties into bad actors and, and skepticism and cynicism where you'll see people who like try to play the algorithm and game, try to do these kind of things for that aspect. And so then all of a sudden it becomes to where it's like, well, if I go and actually verify that, like, am I not also supporting him when I've already heard these things? We see this happen time and time again. One of the reasons why, like, I will try and make sure that if like, if lies are being said, cause like I, somebody was accusing me of something, I think last year. And I was like, no, like, that's not, that's not true at all. And here's like the evidence. And someone's like, well, why did you take time? And just, why don't you just ignore it? And I was like, the problem is, is that when these things set in the zeitgeist, you just have people who will just read a headline and then they'll take that as fact. And then they'll go on and maybe that person's crazy. And I want to sit here and have a moment that I can point to that, to that person and be like, no, I've, I've talked about that. Like, this is the, here's the evidence. Here's how none of it, that was true bada bing bada boom all right it's done because they and, and the and people think that and, and rightfully so they're like oh you're, you're showing that people can get at you and they can rile you up it's like no i'm not but if you're gonna sit here and say a lie i will defend it i will break it down and show you guys why it's not true because people won't and, and in, in a way 
when I, when I think about it and kind of my thought here and we'll let preach wrap up as well. But my thought here is though, is that, you know, it would be great if people did that. And I think maybe a lot of people do that, but there's still a group of people uh, that don't. And it, to expect them to be who they aren't is to expect is to, for me to be frustrated at that. And so being that I know that people are that way, then I'm going to conform and give myself, you know, and, and present the information and try to, you know, give sources and list this and encourage people to go and follow through because I know that humanity is the way that humanity is. And while you, we can say it's unfortunate and it should be better and we should always encourage that. It's also understanding where we are today. And I've had that experience like with my, my brother. I remember one time when he was in, uh, in high school, one of his friends went and shared to his entire school, something that my brother did not want shared and it hurt him. And my brother was upset and he was really mad at his friend. And I sat down and talked with him and I said, like, listen, you know, like the best thing for you to do is a forgive your friend, but B note that that's who they are. There's somebody who it can't be trusted with information or there's somebody who's going to run their mouth and you can understand that about them so that you don't tell them things that you don't want people to know, but for things that you want people to know, then you tell them that because then they'll make sure that it gets around to everybody. So you know, that's who they are now. And that's a gift that they gave you, even though it hurt at first, but you should forgive them and you should understand who they are. And therefore just make sure that you don't tell them anything you don't want to know, but everything that you want everybody else to know, you make sure that they know that and they'll make sure that it gets around because that's, they've shown you who they are. So that's something where I've kind of seen it's like, it's just understand who people are as best as you can. I think understanding um, of the aspect is kind of one of the real key takeaways. I comes out and says, well, it only costs us like $15, but this guy is a known liar. Like you have to bear all these things in mind. There's nuance to it. There's all these characterizations of it. And if you read that, in my example, Preach will never touch World of Warcraft ever again and is abandoning ship because of the allegations. No, that's not what I said at all. In that same video, the, the allegations were what was the final straw. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ, now this is happening? Right, okay, <laughs> we're, we're pulling away from this. We're taking a break. And then clearly talk about if we come back, it'll be because these changes have happened to the game. But that's the, 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 the straw that broke the camel's back. It's not the weight that was piled on the camel's back. It was just another thing in the quagmire that happened to it. And you can see all that for free. So that's the situation. That's where we're at. And this tribalism shit has got to stop. And it never will. Chris, it will never stop. <laughs> the tribalism will never end. Ever. I think there's a chance, especially as the business model uh, evolves and as the games evolve so that you're able to take breaks. So it's not essentially where you're a part of just one game community, but maybe you're a part of more games and more, you know, communities so that it isn't that, but there will, there always be people who take it too far. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to call that stuff out. I know a lot of people have a advocated that uh, like any of that gets, should be swept under the rug and should be discussed. And I think light is the best disinfectant. I think if you sit here and don't agree, like if there's things that are going on within like your gaming community or, or within whatever, that it's important to discuss that, not be afraid of that. Um, there are going to be risks, especially because you might be ostracized uh, because there are people who are like, no, 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 we don't want people to talk about that. But I think it's worse. I think that's what makes when, especially with 14, when people say it's not toxic, I go, well, I mean, generally speaking within the game, you're going to have a good experience, but I want you to understand that like, there's a real risk that when you discover that side, when that side rears its head, um, it might actually hurt your experience worse because you weren't ready for it as opposed to like, well, you know what? Like chances are, here's the things that generally you might want to, uh, understand people kind of get upset or frustrated by. And if you have that understanding, then when it happens, then you, then it's not like, you know, like the shock and this awe. And then you're like, Oh, wait a minute, what's happening. But also I do get a lot more of those stories and those examples being a content creator than somebody who just is playing the game and enjoying the game that they might not ever see it. In fact, I've, I think there are people who play this game and they're like, I've had, you know, you know, 13 years of a great experience. And I'm like, I, I think that's fantastic. I have had a different story, not just necessarily to me, but people that I love and play the game and have experienced that. And the tears that are real that people have felt being, uh, you know, like bullied or, or hated on uh, for that. And those things do exist and they do happen. And to say that they don't, I think is only setting other people up in the future to have a harder and more 
difficult time, not just with one game, but with future games as well. But that's obviously just my opinion, and I'd love to know yours. Guys, what did you think about this uh, reaction discussion? Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, go check out the full video if you want to see Preach's full comments. He goes a lot into World of Warcraft. I don't have a lot to add. It's not my game specifically. I do have thoughts about like whether it's going to be a success or not. So if you guys would like to see that video and discussion, sound off below and I'll see if I can't get that uh, creative for you guys. Hopefully uh, this was fun. I had a really good time making it. Thank you guys so much for sending this my, this my way. I think I've got four or five other reaction video requests in my queue saw me trying to get those um you know um done and, and, and rocking and rolling this is almost an hour into it his uh 24 minute video so we'll get this clip down for you guys here for youtube like favorite subscribe share comment below uh, all those things help out the channel uh, immensely thank you guys so much for being here hopefully you enjoyed hopefully i'll see you in my next video but until then take care yeah it's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments that's right you know me when it comes to destiny i'm off with a clam and i'm glad you're feeling better oh yeah